Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Todd Carignon and uh, yeah, uh, today we're going to be learning how to organize a limited palette. Um, so what does a limited palette mean? It just means a limited number of paints and trying to get the most out of what you have from that. Uh, today, what we're going to use is I've got some cadmium red scarlet. I've got some cadmium yellow. And cadmium lemon. French ultramarine. And because this is more for my, um, my plain air class, I'm going to do some cheat with some sap green. Titanium white. And some ivory black. So A lot of times when I'm out doing stuff on my own, you know, I might just use a the primary colors, which would be you know a red, a yellow, and a blue. Um, a lot of times I'll end up throwing a green in there because the red, green, and the blue make a nice black. You can get something that's pretty neutral. Um, I am going to go ahead. I'm using the black just as a cheat. Um, because I don't know, this is a way of setting up my palette um, before I go out painting, doing some plain air stuff. And right now this is for tomorrow because I'm teaching a class and I don't know what tomorrow's gonna be like. So, um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of do something that's a generic Kind of palette. So when I'm trying to organize my thoughts from outside, a lot of times what I'm thinking of is I'm trying to reduce the values. Because the human eye picks up all kinds of fluctuations and nuances and values. But when I'm painting, I don't need all that information. I'm trying to strip it down to its basic, basic form. And the most basic form, I won't say the most basic, but um, the one that I end up using for the most part is five value steps. And for something that is mid-range, mid-tone, meaning it's not too light and it's not too dark, um, what ends up happening is most of everything falls into like the light gray, medium gray, and a dark gray. And then I've got my whites and my blacks for accents if I need them. Of course, this doesn't always work sometimes. Sometimes you need six values, 
sometimes you need you can get away with less than five you know, if you can get three a light a dark and a mid-tone then you're golden any less than that and you are probably oversimplifying making it extremely graphic so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make three steps here that are noticeably different like I said I don't know what um, tomorrow you know it could be a gray day it could be nice and sunny but I'm gonna try to just make something that's kind of generic and even if this doesn't work exactly right um, it's okay it's close enough it's a good starting point and I can use it and manipulate it to make something that does work for me I think this is a good start. Yeah, a little bit of a jump there. Maybe I will darken that up just a smidge. And I might not even use these grays at all, but if I need them, they're there to help. And you're gonna see how this becomes kind of the building block for my whole painting here. And I can't stress enough that doing this now um, can be extremely helpful because when you're out there um, in the field And you're losing your light it's always nice to have some colors that are pre-made okay that looks pretty good okay all right so what I want to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm bring each of these colors down and I, I like setting it up this way okay so why do I set up my colors this way um, I just do it as if it's the rainbow so no matter what colors that I use I do like Roy G Biv you know red orange yellow green blue violet um, you know and then if I have like a cooler red you know permanent rose I would go here and then the warmer red and then we go into an orange and then a warm yellow maybe I'd use a cool yellow like yellow ochre um, green is the only green I really use, although I do use a thalo uh, turquoise sometimes, so it goes from green into the turquoise um, into, you know, the this blue is has a little bit of red in it, so it kind of leans a little bit purple, um, or I might use uh, just a thalo blue, which is like a, a greener color, so that would be the transition between those. Um, like I said, I don't always use black, but I'm using it for this because when I'm outside and if I have a color that needs to be dulled down, killed, then I, um, then I can just add some gray to it. There's all kinds of way of, ways of dulling down color. Um, Okay, I'm already coming into some problems here, but so what I want to do is I want to take each of these colors and Um, and try to match it up with what's going on here. So what I do is, okay, so with the yellow, adding a little bit of black. Add black, it starts turning it green. Well, I don't want it to be green, so I want to neutralize it a little bit, so I put some red in it, okay? 
So mostly yellow, a little bit of red, a little bit of green to darken it up, okay? To keep it nice and warm, it needs to have that red in it. So what I do with that is as I'm mixing it, I go over top of this color and I squint and it should start to, um, to blend in with it. When you squint and if things are a similar value, ooh, that got really green really quick, didn't it? See how that's getting closer though? So it needs to warm up, get some green out of it by neutralizing it with the red. Back with the yellow. Now I don't always use the same colors every time too. Um, I don't even know if these colors will work that great on location. Okay. So that's a little, little dark. That's more yellow to it. The funny thing is, is that by doing it this way, I don't even know if I will ever use this yellow. Okay, so when I squint, the edges of that seem to disappear and get a little bit fuzzy. Okay, um, even though you can get colors that are very, very different, it might have a lot of contrast as far as um, like warms and cools, meaning like a warm color would be you know, your red or your yellow, and a cool color would be blue. Greens tend to be kind of in between. Purples tend to be in between, or can be. See, that needs to be darker. So, that's just a little bit of black. I'm not even mixing up a lot of these colors here. This is just kind of to, kind of the, give me a, a little grid. I can always mix up colors quickly later on. Ooh, that's getting close. Actually, that's, that's not too bad. Hmm. I'll just leave it like that. Okay. And then yellow. Red. And this is going to be a lot more black to get it darker. So it's turning pretty green here. Actually, you know, if it is turning green, that's it's kind of okay. I don't, I'm not too hung up on it. All right. So using these um, cadmium colors means that they are bright. These are pretty intense colors, and I'm going to get a lot of intensity. So I'm trying to just pull a little bit at a time. Okay, the worst thing that you can do is pull a big old glob of red and put it in there. Then it turns really orange, which might be okay, might not be okay. But it's easier just to put a little bit at a time. Still needs to be darker. Black. Black and yellow makes a nice green. Use that red to kind of neutralize it. That's pretty close, pretty close. And just a little bit more. Don't want to get greedy. Yeah, I'm liking that. Cool, all right. Um, okay, let's go with that red.
And I know you're thinking um, in that landscape, um, it's a pretty traditional landscape. Got a, um, a cypress. Oh, look how dark that is. It's way too dark. It's too light for that. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit. Yeah, that's getting pretty close right there. Sometimes you can just bring these colors down if it's exactly, sometimes it's exactly right. I use um, yellow ochre a lot, and a lot of times I can bring it down and it's right in the that middle gray. So that's something to consider too, is that each of these has a potential strength, um, intensity of color, which is the chroma. And that chroma for red is in the lower key. So when red is darkest, it's most um, it's most powerful, most intense. The yellow, of course, when it's lightest, it's most intense. The green will probably be in the mid, um, mid to lower. The blue, mid to lower, depending. I don't know. We'll see. How, see how that dissolves into that and it's really different because the it almost turns this blue looking um, against that intense red but I think that's pretty close and so something you might have noticed too is that okay um, you know, these are kind of globs, but when you're doing your white, make sure that you kind of do it in a line, you know, squeeze it out in that tube so that when I'm pulling, I'm not pulling from the center. You know, I'm pulling a little bit, like grabbing a loaf from, you know, the end slice from a loaf of bread. You know, you don't take that slice right out of the middle and take it out from the edge. That keeps the rest of my paint from being infected. You can see where a little bit of, of it is on the edge, but hopefully not too bad. Uh, yeah, that's looking good. Yeah, looking good. So I want to just keep, con you know, comparing it to all of them to make sure that I'm on the right track. And if I have to adjust, I will adjust. Not great planning on my part. Poor camera placement is, yeah, look how much darker that needs to go. So no white in this, okay? I was using white to get lighter. Be consistent about it, okay? So yellow, none of these yellows have any white in it because I'm having to go darker. So I'm always using black, which makes it a shade. White is a tint, black is a shade. So this is a tint of a red, tint of a red, and then I'm going to have to, I'm jumping over the regular color or the tube color to make me a nice shade of red, kind of a maroon color. Yeah, that's nice. It's one of my favorite colors, actually. Oh, let's go. Well, that's close there. Oh, could be a little bit closer. Maybe I'll add just a little bit more black. Need to be careful not to get into any of that white. See, that's nice step. You no, know, pink, you no, know, reddish, and then dark. Yeah, that's good. Oh yeah, look at that. It's just squint, and if it dissolves right into it, then you're good. Golden. Okay. That could have been mixed a little bit better, but yeah. I don't care.
always make sure to wipe this off in between, okay? Not only this way with the blade, but along the edge too, because you might get a little bit of a line. You know, you get some paint beaded up on the, the edge of your knife there. So make sure that you get it nice and clean. Okay, so green, we're making tints. So what do we say about tints? Tints is white, not black. Oops, got a little bit of red in there. Oh well. So I think I was saying before about the uh, the reds. You know, you might not think of a traditional landscape as having pinks in it, but I ask you to think again because even though some of these colors seem like obnoxious for a landscape, um, chances are I'm going to use a little bit of everything. And a lot of times, if um, if a color seems, I mean, sometimes I'll mix up a color and it just seems like it's completely wrong and it's not going to work at all. Um, but I've learned never just throw a color away. If you've got a pile of paint that's getting out of control, um, you know, where... You know, you've put too much of a color into it and it's overpowered the the um, the pile of paint you know and you're like oh I can't you know I ought to just throw this away and start over again well just put it off to the side you can start again that's looking pretty good I'll go ahead and stay with that Another pile of green. Um, but yeah, I won't throw it away. I'll just set it aside and invariably end up using it. Because the thing with using the limited palette is that instead of a bunch of different little colors using a little bit of it, you end up using all these colors kind of feed into each other. You know, if I want a purple, then it's going to be that blue and that red. If I need an orange, it's going to be that red and that yellow. If I need a brown, it'll be that red and that green. You know, if, um, if I need another green, it'll be that yellow and that blue. So, you know, I've always, all these colors end up, instead of being isolated, they end up mixing with each other. And then you get a more unified painting. And so it might surprise you that see those are opposite colors so if I put this green and this red together on the painting you're gonna get a ton of vibration um, I don't know. colors are exciting even gray, using gray in a painting, there's a lot of artists <clears throat> that don't think that you should be able, or that you shouldn't use black in a painting, but I don't know, when you put colors up against each other, you put that red up against that, um, that gray, it ends up turning this a little bit greenish. Um, they, they play off each other. There's a whole, yeah, color theory is awesome. And this is a tint as well, because the darkest green is still lighter than the green that's right out of the tube. on. 
Now I could be making up larger piles of paint, but like I said, I don't know what I'm going to need <laughs> once I get out there. So I'll just go ahead and do small piles of paint. And then if I'm out there on location, I'm like, ooh, I need more of this color. Then I can just whip it up really quick. And I always have this to compare it to. Um, and like I said, this is my kind of rough idea of the colors that I'm going to need. But I won't know for sure until I actually get out there. And it might be that I never need this color, but I need something in between these two. So then I can just mix these two together and make a pile of paint, you know, right there. The cool thing about doing the palette like this is that it stays organized fairly well, you know, for a while. Like, the further along in your painting that you get, it definitely... There's definitely entropy where, you know, I start mixing this color with this, you know, as I'm like pulling some of that into there because I'm like, oh, I like this, but it needs to be a little bit bluer, you know, um, or this green is too intense. It needs to be lighter and it needs some red in it. So pull some of that pink into there. Um, so by the end, the uh, my palette's not quite as pretty as this, but... Looks pretty good. It's a little bit hard to tell with some of this. A little bit lighter. And if something's a little bit off, like once I start putting things together and I know, like, whatever I'm working on, if the value of this and that pink, you know, are supposed to be next to each other and be the same value, and this turns out to be darker, it's not that big a deal to add a little bit of white to it if I need to. Or if that needs to be darker, you know, I can add a little bit of red to it, um, or whatever it is that I'm, I'm shooting for. The whole point is that this is going to save a whole bunch of time, because look, we're at 28 minutes. It's going to be like 30 minutes worth of mixing. Um, you know, but instead, once I'm out there on location, I see something that I want to paint. I can just start laying it right in. You know, at least blocking in with these. That's the whole thing, too, with keeping it to five values, is that... Um, like a traditional scale might be like a nine-point scale. So if I have one, two, three, four, five values, and I start blocking in my whole painting just using five values um, for everything and forcing them into that structure, then as I get along further, um, if I need something that's lighter than this, I can mix this with white. So the in-between, or mix that yellow with it. Um, that yellow is kind of an in-between anyway. Between this and this is that. Um, so all of a sudden I've got one, two, three, and if I mix those two together, then I'll get a four, five, mix those two together, six, seven, mix those two, I do, mix something up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, you get what I'm saying? If I need this to be darker, but not as dark as this, I can mix these two together to get an in-between. And that works for all of them. So, actually, you know, just mixing these two together to get us another. Um, but I don't want to start out with nine. It's just too much. Too, too much. Keep it simple. You guys familiar with that? K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, stupid. I gotta, like, tell myself that all the time. Start getting out of hand. on camera but I'm thinking that it looks a little it's a little light a little bit more blue to it
any black into this. It doesn't mean that later on I wouldn't want some black. Because if I needed this to be grayed down, you know, right now it's dark and it's pretty intense. Well, if I need it to be dark but not so intense, then I need to just throw some other colors into it. If it needs to be more purpley, throw some red into it. If it needs to be more green, throw some yellow into it, or the green, sap green. If I just want to dull it down into a nice gray, like a blue gray, you know, add some black and some white to it. That's the great thing, you know, if I need this to, to be closer to this, well, I just add that into it. this camera sometimes I'm looking through the through the camera screen but I need to kind of trust my instincts I think that needs to be a little bit darker I'm not happy with that jump said and even if you're off a little bit it's not the end of the world.